Part One. You will hear a survey company representative ringing a person to obtain some information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello. Hello. Who is this? Hello. I'm a representative of the Tally Ho Survey Company, and I'd like to ask you a few questions regarding exercise. Ah, that's an interesting subject. Yes, we think so too. But I'm afraid I'm a bit busy at the moment. Don't worry. This will only take about four minutes at the most. It's ten twenty-five now, so it will all be over by ten thirty. Well, all right. If it's that short, it will be. So, one of the first things I need to know is where you are. That is, which suburb or area of the city. The last client was in Blackburn, for example. Blackburn. That's close to me. I'm in Box Hill. Another eastern suburb, then. I have a friend in Box Hill too. Interesting place. Now, I need your approximate age for this survey. Are you younger than twenty, between twenty and twenty-nine, thirty and thirty-nine, and so on? I'll turn forty in a few months, so that puts me in the forty to forty-nine age group. Well, that's in a few months, so right now you're in the thirty to thirty-nine. All right, so put that then. Okay. Now I need to know your occupation. The last caller was a housewife, for example. The one before that, a teacher. I used to be a teacher too, teaching cookery. And now? Now you can just put domestic duties. Actually, I hope to begin a new job soon as a cook, but that won't be for some time yet. I have to wait for my husband's restaurant to open. Cook? That sounds interesting. But it's domestic duties for now. Okay, that just leaves some information about your family. This is not obligatory at all, so if you don't want to answer, that's fine. What sort of information exactly? Oh, it's very broad. Married with children, single mother, that sort of thing. The last customer said she was a single mother. I'm married and not a mother. Put married, no children. I'm married with children myself, but I'll put in your details, and that finishes the profile and just leaves the actual survey itself. If you're ready to proceed. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. All right, let's begin the survey now about your exercise habits. I'm afraid I don't exercise much at all. Well, the main question is in what form you take your exercise, however little that may be. For example, in just cleaning, do you clean the house? My husband does the cleaning actually, but I walk to the supermarket and shops very often, up to four times a week. I'll put that then. Unless there's something else, nothing else really. But I diet. I'm very strict about what I eat. Oh, and I do yoga, although that's not very energetic. More a form of relaxation and to tighten my muscles. They're both important, of course. But what about sport? Do you undertake any sporting activities? This could be very infrequent. In the past, for example. My husband plays basketball at the local school, and I sometimes watch. When he was younger, he was in a basketball team, but I never participated. Have you done anything at all? I used to hike in a nearby national park. Well, that's a definite physical activity, so I'll put that, but not basketball. 
All right, that just leaves future exercise intentions. Do you plan or expect to do at some stage any form of exercise? I once dreamt of doing modern dance, but that's never going to happen. Realistically, I'm thinking about going swimming at the local aquatic centre. Although my husband thinks we should just jog, I can't see myself doing that though. Too tiring. I can understand. I used to jog too, and it really makes you sweat. I'd say swimming's a much better option. But I'll be starting this job as a cook in my husband's restaurant. I imagine I'll be very tired doing all those late shifts. But if I have any energy left over, I might go to the aquatic centre to release some stress. All right. Well, that's the end of the survey. Thank you very much for your time. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a speech given by a man called George Dyson about Northfield Sports Complex. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. On behalf of Northfield Sports Complex, I'd like to extend our warmest welcome to you all here this evening. I'm George Dyson, founder of Northfield Sports Complex. I am giving this speech today to celebrate a special occasion. We started the business exactly a decade ago, and today we have developed into a large firm. With a sizable group of members, we've also been nominated the most valuable company by Green Town at the yearly business awards, which will be held next week. As experienced and qualified reporters, you are invited here to experience and witness this historical moment of Northfield Sports Complex together with us. Situated within the campus of Green Town University, Northfield Sports Complex is a modern, refreshing, and fully equipped facility for sports of all kinds. As part of its commitment to the local community, Northfield Sports Complex is available not only to school children but also to local residents. It offers a wide range of facilities, including a 25-meter swimming pool, paved walking and jogging paths, a well-equipped fitness gym, all-weather pitches, indoor courts for table tennis, tennis, and other sports, as well as a renowned skating rink. Different age groups can all find the right sports to participate in. That's why local residents enjoy working out here. As a result, natives here are healthier than most of the people within our nation. The whole town is very proud of having nurtured two world champions who were once both trained right here in our skating rink. Thus, it has become the ideal venue to learn to skate and have fun. But what I take pride in most of all is the skating rink that has stirred the interest of boys and girls here. In local schools to skate, since opening, an increasing number of pupils have been paying regular visits to the skating rink. A new yoga classroom with trainers will be open next month for mothers with babies. They can bring their own yoga mat and work out together with their babies. This will be a great way for them to get healthy and meet other mums. There will also be a brand new gym open to the pensioners in the near future. Just this month. A new swimming pool is open to all fitness levels, with special offers for those without a job. Our complex is open daily from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., 
except on Thanksgiving and Christmas. We intend to extend our business in the coming year. A list of equipment will be put up for sale, ranging from exercising equipment like cardio machines to sports recovery and injury prevention facilities. Within our complex, we try our best to avoid injuries of any kind. We train knowledgeable staff to guide our clients through correct workout regimens. For those who want to further ensure workout safety, they are welcome to apply to be a member of our standing committee. They are responsible for revising the safety guidelines and supervising its enforcement. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Now, I would like to introduce some of our most popular sports facilities here at Northfield Sports Complex. Our 25 metre swimming pool is the centrepiece of the complex, combining modern, bright and airy surroundings with fully up-to-date changing facilities. The pool is excellent for learning how to swim, improving techniques and, of course, competing in school competitions. It is also bookable for private functions, including pool parties, where lifeguards are available. Next, we have the only climbing wall throughout the whole town. Many would see rock climbing as a type of extreme sport, exposing great risk to those who participate. But actually, under proper guidance and with close supervision by the coach here, it is a perfect sport for the youth to increase their flexibility and strengthen their muscles. I have to mention our skating rink once again. As our most popular facility, it has been prominently featured in a TV commercial we've released recently. There is no other skating rink larger than ours within the whole nation. Also, our state-of-the-art gym is an inspiring place to train and keep fit in relaxed and friendly surroundings. The Techno Gym equipment enables our clients to measure their performance. If you book a one-on-one -on -one trainer, he or she might suggest a future training plan and help you train more systematically. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students attending a university open day. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 25. Excuse me, is this seat taken? No, by all means, have a seat. Are you here for the open day? Yes, I think I've just about finished now. I got here first thing this morning. What about you? I got here a little while ago. I spent some time walking around the place first just to get a feel for what it's like. I'm doing the organised events this afternoon. I thought I'd have a coffee before I get started. 
It's a lovely campus, isn't it? Yes, I love it. And the facilities are unbelievable.、Mm. I've just been over to have a look at the sports centre. There's an Olympic size swimming pool, a gym, squash courts, <laughs> everything really. All the high street banks are here, and the bookshop looks better than the one in town. There's supposed to be a big supermarket a few minutes walk from the main entrance, so there's pretty much everything you need here. Yes, I really like the look of it. Um, I wonder if you can help me. I think I need to register to let them know I've arrived. Don't I? I'm not sure you have to. You can just pick up an information pack from the desk over there. And nobody asked my name or anything when I turned up for the events earlier. I just walked in. But you never know; they might check after to see if people have bothered to come to the open day. So I think it's best to register. Thanks. I'll just finish my coffee and then I'll get started.、Mm. So,、uh, is this your first open day? No, it's my fourth. I've been to Sussex, Coventry, Birmingham so far. They've all got their good points, but being a bit older, I'm particularly keen on somewhere that has a few students my age on the course.、Mm. Apart from that, they all seem to have great links to businesses, and there isn't much to choose between them as far as their facilities are concerned. How about you? I haven't been to any other open days yet,、mm. but I'm hoping I end up here. I've just been to a presentation by the head of department. It sounds like a great place to do maths.、Uh, that's my subject. He was telling us about all the avenues open to maths graduates and the kind of work you can end up doing. A lot of students go into finance, accountancy, banking, that kind of thing. I can't say that's ever appealed to me, though. My maths teacher at college was telling me about the opportunities in the software industry, which I quite like the sound of. Before you hear more of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions twenty-six to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-six to thirty. Well, I hope you managed to get in. According to the letter they sent me, my department is doing something similar. There's a talk later this afternoon by the head. I can't miss that. There's also someone who'll be explaining about the year abroad. Apparently, you can spend your third year at one of their partner universities in Spain or Germany. I'm going to have to give that a miss though to catch my train. Oh, and there's also an exhibition area in the physics department with some of the things people are doing here. I'll try and catch that. There were a few second and third year students at the exhibition I went to. One of them gave me some great tips on finding work as well. I already knew about a couple of accountancy firms in the area that offer work experience. That's on a voluntary basis, though. But apparently, the students helping here on the open day get paid, and the university advertises other jobs that come up now and again. So that's worth remembering. And a lot of the shops here are always looking for staff.、Mm, that's useful to know. I overheard someone saying there's a tour of some of the halls of residence in about half an hour. So I think I'll register and try to fit that in before I go to the talk. Are you thinking of living on campus? I've not made my mind up yet. I don't live far from here. My parents' place is just the other side of town. I could easily get the bus onto campus. Plus, it would be a lot cheaper if I stayed at home. But it would be nice to get some independence as well. So I don't know. I'll have to see. But I didn't know about the tour. Would you mind if I tag along with you? No, not at all. Let me just finish my coffee and I'll go and register. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a monologue on the subject of the Celt. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome to this introductory lecture on the Celts. Who were the Celts? The Celts were an Indo-European group that is related linguistically to the Greeks, the Germanic peoples, certain Italic groups, and peoples of the Indian subcontinent. They arose in Central Europe at the beginning of the first millennium BC. And were an iron-using and horse-rearing peoples. By the end of the first millennium BC, their cultural group had spread up and down the Danube and Rhine, taking in Gaul, Ireland, and Britain, across Central Europe into northern Italy and northern Spain. Their roaming across Europe led some of the Celtic tribes to sack Rome in 390 BC, creating a fear of the northern barbarians. That was to haunt Romans for hundreds of years to come. The Celts are defined archaeologically by the type sites of Hulsat and Latene, the former being taken to relate to an earlier phase of cultural development. Hulsat, an ancient salt mining area, was excavated from 1876 onwards by the Viennese Academy of Sciences, and provided the first classification of the prehistoric Celts. In 1858, the waters of Lake Neuchatel in Switzerland sunk to a low level, revealing a large prehistoric settlement with a huge number of surviving artifacts. The nearby town of Latene gave its name to the second phase of Celtic cultural development. However, please note that these phases overlap through time and are defined according to geographical area. Let's look at each of these, taking the Hallstatt first. Hallstatt culture is characterized in four stages. A and B were during the Late Bronze Age, from about 1200 to 700 BC. C was in the Early Iron Age, from about 700 to 600 BC. D was from about 600 to 475 BC. The Hallstatt culture spanned Central Europe, with its center in the area around Hallstatt in Central Austria. There were two distinct cultural zones, the eastern and the western. At the start of the period, long-distance trade was already well established in copper and tin, the basic requirements for manufacture of bronze. From about 700 BC, trade in iron also became established. The Hallstatt area also already controlled the trade in salt, crucial when there were few other means to preserve food. Control of these two crucial trade goods, iron and salt, provided the basis for the accumulation of wealth and influence. From 800 BC, some burials of rich people can be identified in Central Europe, with grave goods such as wheeled wagons and iron swords. Hallstatt C saw the construction of fortified hilltop settlements to the north of the Alps. These had burial mounds holding very high-quality goods, such as vehicles and expensive imported treasures. By the time of the Hallstatt D period, these increasingly extravagant burial mounds were clustered around a few major hill forts to the southwest of the region. This suggests a development and a concentration of wealth and social power, possibly based on the development of Massilia, present-day Marseille. As a Greek trading port, the expansion of luxury trade brought greater opportunities for profit and helped to create an increasingly stratified society, with the development of a wealthy nobility. Over the period from 1846 to 1863, a thousand graves were found at Hallstatt, with an astonishing range of artifacts.
including clothing and salt mining equipment, as well as weapons, jewelry, pottery, and imported bronze vessels in the chieftain's graves. The Latene era was the time of Celtic expansion and migration, and the time of formation of the myths. The Latene culture is named after the site in Switzerland where it was first discovered. The Latene people were those known to the Romans as Gauls, originally found in an area from eastern France to Bohemia. The Latene culture spread rapidly from about 400 BC. The Laten Celts settled in Spain in 450 BC, in northern Italy in 400 BC, invaded Rome in 390 BC, invaded Greece in 279 BC, invaded Galatia in modern Turkey in 270 BC. By 200 BC, they occupied the lands that are now Britain, the Netherlands, Brittany, Belgium, Germany and Switzerland. There is much debate over how much of the expansion into Britain was achieved through invasion and settlement and how much was the expression of cultural transfer that accompanied trade and reflected the commonality of kinship and language of many tribes. There is little evidence for actual migration of Latin people into Britain. Nevertheless, it does appear that the Latin culture was more militarily focused than the Hallstatt one. The Latin graves across Europe hold iron weapons, swords and spearheads, and wooden shields, as well as everyday items such as razors, yokes, cauldrons and jewellery. That is the end of part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.